You are currently the only person in this conference. Welcome back to the virtual classroom of Kim Bay School of Chemistry. Can you hear me? Uh, sound clear? All right. Uh, this is the uh, latest paper discussion, which is a 2020 uh, June paper. In fact, this was uh, the paper which was given at 2020 October, right? Uh, the first question. Bromine oxidizes metanoic acid to form carbon dioxide. Which of the following methods would not be suitable for measuring the progress of the reaction? The colorimetry is suitable because bromine is colored and the products are colorless. If the reactant is colored and the products are colorless, we can use colorimetry. That's suitable. Measuring electrical conductivity is indeed suitable because the reactants have no ions, but the products have ions. So as the reactants form the products, the conductivity will increase. So that's a suitable method. Quenching and titrating with acid. Uh, you, can't, you can titrate with alkali, but not with acid, right? Because there's no alkali to react with acid. There's only acid. So you, if we, the question is, uh, the answer will be correct if it's titrating with alkali, not with acid. Measuring the volume of gas can be used because carbon dioxide is a gas. So what cannot be used is C. Yeah. The next one. The rate of reaction between two compounds, Y and Z, was investigated. The results are shown. What are the orders of reaction with respect to Y and Z? Order with respect to Y, you can keep Y, uh, uh, Z constant, expanding number two and three. And the Y has halved. There is no change in the rate. When the, when the concentration of Y is halved, keeping Z constant, no change in the rate. That means order with respect to Y has to be zero thought. So it has to be either A or B the answer. And then let's see Z. Order with respect to Z, you have to keep Y constant. That means experiment one and two. You're keeping Y constant. And you're increasing the concentration of uh, Z by you're doubling it. When you double the concentration of Z, the rate has increased by four times, right? Four times eight is 32, 3 point two ten to the power minus three, 10 to the power minus two, right? Four times, that means two to the power two equals four. That means the order with respect to Z is second order. That's a straightforward question. The uh, inorganic anti-cancer drug cisplatin is hydrolyzed by water to make it active. The reaction is given. The hydrolysis is first order overall. The half-life can be found from the graph of concentration of cisplatin against time. That means uh, uh, it should have constant half-life, right? The half-life of the reaction. Half-life of the reaction. Let's find from the graph. What's the half-life? Uh, time taken for the initial consumption drop to its half value. Uh, let me I think I'm able to see it clearly. That is initial is 20, so you can find the half-life at 10. And from 5 to again, right, find the half-life. What's the value, please? I can't uh, clearly see in this. But anyway, uh, it should be 460, right? Because it can't be 430. That's correct. So answer should be B. Somewhere here. So it's uh, more than half. So it can't be 430. It can't be 5, 600 anyway. Got it? So 460, 460 is 920. So here is 920. This is 900, yeah. 
Yeah, this is not accurate because I have not taken the accuracy somewhere here. It should fall into. So that's done. Uh, propane reacts with iodine in acidic solution. The rate equation for the formation of iodopropane is found to be is given, which is which is uh, which of the following is true? The units of the rate constant are decimeter cube per mole per second. Let's check on that. Rate is moles per decimeter cube. This is moles per decimeter cube times moles per decimeter cube, moles per decimeter cube squared. So per mole dm cube per second, that's correct, right? Reaction is first order overall, that's right, wrong, it's second order. We need for the rate, mole per decimeter cube per second. It should be mole per decimeter cube per second, not decimeter cube per mole per second, that's wrong. Doubling the concentrations of propanone and now fighting quadruples the rate. No. That's wrong, right? Because iodine is mentioned. Propanone, propanone and H plus will quadruple the rate. Two times two is four. Not iodine because iodine is zero thought. So it actually doubles the rate. If you double the propanone and iodine, because proponone is double, the rate is double, not because of iodine. Iodine is not in the rate equation. Got it? Which of the following is not true? The reaction rate increases if the temperature is raised. Yes, that's well known. The rate constant increases temperature. Yes, whatever happens to rate happens to rate constant. Whatever happens to rate happens to the rate constant. The addition of small amount of sodium hydroxide decreases the reaction rate. Addition of small amount of raw sodium hydroxide. That's right, because here propanone reacts with iodine in the acidic solution. That means acid is a catalyst here. Acid is a catalyst, that is well known, right? Propanone iodine reaction. It's an acid catalyzed reaction. So by adding sodium hydroxide, you are neutralizing the acid. In other words, you're removing the catalyst. Weight will decrease. That's also correct, right? And therefore this has to be wrong, we'll see. If the rate is unchanged, the rate is unchanged when the hydrogen ion concentration is doubled. Hydrogen ion concentration is doubled. Why not? Rate will change, right? If H plus concentration is doubled, the rate will change. That is wrong. It says unchanged. That's H plus is in the slower step. Got it? Any questions? The equation shows the hydrolysis of bromoalkane. The rate equation is this. That means this is a uh, first order reaction, which means this follows the SN1 mechanism. It has to be tertiary haloalkane. Bromomethane is wrong. True bromopropane possible, but secondary. This is primary. One bromo. 2-methylpropane, primary, 2-methylpropane is tertiary. Tertiary for sure is SN1, right? Secondary question mark, it can be SN1 or SN2, but tertiary for sure. So 2-methylpropane is tertiary. Tertiary undergoes um, SN1 mechanism because of the steric hindrance. Therefore, uh, only haloalkane is present. Yeah. 
cushion six. I can. The equation for the exothermic reaction is shown. Uh, which of these is true? Delta H is positive. No, it's negative. Exothermic. Surrounding is positive. Surrounding is positive. Yes. Delta H surrounding minus delta H over T, right? Exothermic means negative, negative, positive. That's correct. System is negative. System is positive because it's turning into a gas. Solid to gas system is positive. Right? Entropy is solid. Total is negative. Uh, system is positive. Rounding is what? Positive. How can total be negative? That's wrong, right? Surrounding is positive. System is also positive. Total should be positive. Total can't be negative. So answer is B. The equation for the equilibrium decomposition for of hydrogen iodide into hydrogen and iodine can be written in two ways. What is expression linking of the two equilibrium? What is expression linking the two equilibrium constants? Let's see. It'll write the KC for this. H2 I2. H I squared K C dash two half I two half H I. So first one is correct, right? K C equals K one C squared. And if I square this, I get that half into two is one. Right, so the A is correct. Understood? Buffer solution contains ethanoic acid with a concentration of 0.1 mole per decimeter cube and sodium ethanoid with a concentration of 0.05. Ka for ethanoic acid is given pH of this buffer. So H plus Ka acid over salt concentration 1.7 then power minus 5 acid concentration 0.1 salt 0 0.05. You find H plus and then you find the pH. What's the answer? Yeah. Can someone tell me the answer, please? I hope all of you have answered this question. These are like straightforward, easy questions. Uh, can someone tell me the answer, please?
4.47, okay, correct. That's question eight. Question nine. Uh, the graph shows the changes in pH during a series of titrations. Each titration involves two solutions, each of concentration 0.1. Okay, so which graph has ethanoic acid, one of the reactants? Ethanoic acid, one of the reactants. Weak acid. Now, what is this graph? Let me name all the titration curves. This is a strong acid, strong base. So then point is seven. This is also strong acid, strong base. Difference here is your conical flask contains a strong uh, base here. Here, the conical flask contains a strong acid. That's the only difference. There's no nothing weak here. This graph three has a strong acid and a weak base. Graph four has a strong base and weak acid. This is uh, right. Strong base, weak acid. End point is uh, around five. Oh, yeah. That means acid is strong. I think graph four is the answer. Graph four, correct? Which graph shows a solution that has the acidic pH at the end? Acidic pH at the end point. Let's see. This is a neutral pH, neutral pH, alkaline, acidic pH, graph three. Strong as your weak base, graph three. Got it? Which indicator is suitable for the titration shown in graph three? Use a data booklet. Uh, this year, use a data booklet, and um, it should be an indicator which coincides with the vertical inflection. That means PKI value should be somewhere close to I three to like seven, three to seven. Because in point is five, three to seven is a vertical. Which one has three to seven? PKI value, P, P, K, I, N, three to seven, that range. You know, booklet, can you please check and let me know? Yeah, bromocresol green is the data booklet you can download from this link given here. Uh, yes, please, uh, you must have the data book with you always in doing the past papers because otherwise you won't get familiar with the data booklet. You always keep a printed copy of the data booklet, right? The link is here, you can download from this. Because of 
step of mechanism for the nucleophilic addition of cyanide, uh, addition of uh, hydrogen cyanide to propanone in the presence of potassium cyanide. Um, the first one, but usually the arrow, we must not uh, point to these pieces. Actually, that is a mistake they always do. It should be like this, right? But anyway, other than that, this should be correct. But there's no other major error here. And uh, the negative charge should be on this. Uh, this there are some errors in this. Uh, the thing is, cyanide, when you draw, you should draw like this. Negative charge is on the carbon. Lone pair is on nitrogen. Right? See how hydrogen cyanide is formed? Electrolytic fission of the CH bond, right? Then the carbon has a negative charge. Hydro nitrogen has a lone pair. Negative charge on only it attacks the positive carbon. This, okay, that's fine, but see the others. These are wrong. This P is wrong. Electron rich to electron poor, right? What's this difference in this and that? Uh, A and C, what's the difference? Ah, oh, the charges. See, they're very tricky. The charges are wrong. Charges are wrong. This is also wrong. So answer is A. Question 11. When propanone reacts with iodine in the presence of sodium hydroxide, the precipitate formed is triiodomethane, iodoform. Triiodomethane, iodoform. Which of the following could not uh, be formed when methyl amine is added to ethanol chloride? Let me write the reaction. The byproduct is HCl. So what is formed? HCl is formed. What is this? Uh, yeah, this can, this can, because this can, this reactant can react. Some of the reactants can react with HCl. That can be formed. This is the product. This cannot be formed, right? Amide, uh, amide cannot be formed. Amides are formed when acid chloride reacts with ammonia. Amides are formed when acid chloride reacts with ammonia. Right? And uh, if amines react with uh, acid chloride, then you get an in substituted amide. So what is produced here is an N-substituted amide. So what is what cannot be formed is this. Others are all formed. This is not a product. This is this reactant reacting with the byproduct produced. Okay. Yep. Yeah. In which of these esters is the percentage by mass of carbon is 55, 54.5? That you had to calculate. Carbon is 12 here, 12 times 2 over the molar mass of the whole thing into 100. B, carbon is 36 over the molar mass into 100. C, carbon is 48 over molar mass. Can you do the calculation and tell me the answer, please? I hope you have done all this. These are straightforward questions. What's the answer for this?
Yeah, answer is C. I hope that's correct. That is a molar mass. Uh, the number of carbons are four. So here, 48. Uh, what is the molar mass of whole thing? Yes, Shamal, the molar mass of the whole molecule. Eighty-eight. Okay, let's see if they uh, get in the answer. Forty-eight. Yes, you get fifty-five point five four. That's correct. Answer C. Fifty-four point five four. Organic compound that reacts with both lithium and tetrahydroaluminate and magnesium could be lithium tetrahydroaluminate can react with anything with carbonyl group, not only aldehydes, ketones. Magnesium reacts with acids because carboxylic acids can be reduced to primary alcohol lithium aluminium hydride. Clear? So anything with the carbonyl group can be reduced with lithium. Only aldehydes and ketones can be, I mean, only sodium borohydrate can be used to reduce only aldehydes and ketones. Lithium aluminium hydride reduces aldehydes, ketones, everything, anything with carbonyl group. Next one. The following uh, methods can be used to distinguish between pairs of organic compounds with no further test. Warm with uh, with warm each compound with failing smell is aldehyde ketone test. Warm each compound acidify potassium dichromate. You can oxidize primary and secondary alcohol. Act 24 DNP Brady's, which is to test file carbonyl compounds again aldehyde ketones. A few drops to each compound, drop by drop by. We'll see. Well, if you remember, this is actually uh, one of the questions repeated. The same question was there, I remember, in 2014, if I'm not mistaken. Which test uh, would distinguish between 2-methylpropane 2-all, 2-methyl and butanone? 2-methylpropane 2-all. 2-methylpropane 2-all is tertiary alcohol, right? 2 methyl propane to all tertiary alcohol. So, what can be done? Oxidation. Or you can use 2 4 DMP. That's right. 2 4 DMP. That's the easiest. Alcohol, other one is a keto. 2 4 DMP is the easiest. Right, one is a uh, alcohol, the other one is a ketone. Which test would distinguish between two methyl propane to all tertiary alcohol and butane one or primary alcohol? Then you can oxidize acidify potassium dichromate. Primary alcohol with color change will occur, orange to green. Secondary alcohol, uh, there's no color change. Which test would be would not be used to distinguish between meth, two methylpropane to all and butanol, which is not we use. Fixed uh, ranges can be used because it's a dehyde and primary alcohol. Uh, potassium dichromate can be used, primary alcohol can be oxidized. Uh, 2 4 DMP can be used because aldehyde gives 2 4 DMP. Oh, sorry, this is 2 4 DMP. You cannot use, right? 2 4 DMP cannot be used. But uh, can you choose the first one? Failing spinetics? You can't use failing spinetics also because both are alcohols, right? So you can't use failing spinetics. I thought one is aldehyde, sorry. 
both are alcohols. You can't use for epigenetics. You can. I'm sorry, I think I'm referring to the wrong question. Question C. This is you have aldehyde and alcohol. So you can use failing splenetics. It's aldehyde and alcohol. But this is not just alcohol, this is a tertiary alcohol. So A can be used. B, potassium dichromate can be used because it is oxidation. Primary alcohol can be oxidized. C, 2,4-DMP also can be used because propanyl is a carbonyl compound. So what is cannot be used is uh, water. So answer is D. Not only water can be used as a test for which uh, organic molecule. Yeah, not esters. Esters, when you put water, nothing happens. Acid chlorides. Acid chloride, if you put water, it forms a carboxylic acid. Immediately, we'll see the fumes, white fumes of HCl. To identify acid chlorides, just you can add water. Right? Got it? Any questions there from section A? Uh, this question concerns uh, calcium chloride, energy change is given, atomization, electron affinity, ionization, second entropy change of, standard entropy change of formation, and the only first science energy of calcium is given. Now, second is also given, experimental addition entropy is given. We have to find the second ionization energy of calcium. So you have to first construct the thermochemical side. This is a bond Haber cycle, and then write the relevant uh, Values now. This is first is formation. Formation. This is lattice energy. What is this? Atomization of calcium. Right. What is this? Ionization of calcium. First ionization. And you got the next one, which is second ionization. This is a one step by step, okay, not at once. So here you have plus one. First and second, there is two electrons, there's only one electron. Here you atomize the chlorine. Calcium two plus starts two CO. And then you add two electrons to chlorine. Okay, so the question. So to find the second energy of calcium, what you need to do is you add all these values. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Add all of them and make it equal delta H1. Add all of them, make it equal delta H1. Delta H1 is given. This is delta H1 formation. So attach one. H three is atomization of chlorine. Oh, sorry, calcium. So attach two. This is delta H, uh, this is delta H uh, 2, delta H 4, and delta H 5. This is delta H 4. Delta H 5 is what you need to find. Atomization of chlorine, electron affinity of chlorine. Atomization of chlorine is? Delta H5, let off in delta H6. Please give me the answer. Add all, make it equal to the formation. You get the unknown.
uh, plus thousand one hundred and forty-eight. Is that correct? Anyone else got the same answer? Okay. Did I miss any questions? Let me check. Calculate the second annihilation energy of calcium. This is what we did. Theoretical addition energy for formation of calcium chloride is minus 2,223. Explain what the experimental addition energy is more isothermic than a theoretical value. The difference is greater because calcium chloride is more towards ionic side. More towards ionic side. Calcium chloride, ionic, right? I mean, the character is ionic or covalent. It has a covalent character because calcium chloride itself is ionic, but calcium is a two plus charge. It can polar, polarize the chlorine to a great extent. So that gives a false R minus. That is energy is inversely proportional to the sum of the ionic. False R plus R minus. And this energy will drop as a result. This energy will drop. Got it? This part small. Then the difference should be other way around. More exothermic. This energy will be less. This energy is less. Less exothermic than it should be. Mm, there's a small issue here. More isothermic means it ha we have to explain this way. It has to be more lattice energy is inverse proportional to sum of the ionic radian. More means R plus R minus should be less. So R plus and R minus less means then it should be ionic character. Polarization is less, right? Yeah. So that is going to explain you. How do you know it's ionic or covalent? Because from this, is more exothermic means uh, more ionic character or covalent. Let me explain this one. Okay, let me uh, start from the beginning. Lattice energy depends on three factors, remember? Charge. Lattice energy is directly proportional to the charge, right? And it is inversely proportional to the sum of the ionic radian. And lattice energy is directly proportional to the covalent character. Not ionic character, covalent character. You might wonder how now, for example, if you take aluminum chloride, it's more covalent, right? More covalent, right? Compared to sodium chloride, because plus one charge, sodium. Charge density is less. Aluminium, charge density is much greater. When the charge density is greater, it will polarize the anion to a great extent. That will result in covalent character. So when the charges are greater, the covalent character increases. I think I clearly mentioned this in my note as well. On the under the I think AS unit two. Uh, under the three factors which affects the energy, I mentioned covalent. Many think it's ionic character. It's wrong because when the cation has a greater charge, right, smaller size, that will not favor ionic character. That will favor covalent character because that will polarize the anion well. Got it? So more exothermic means that this energy has increased. That means covalent character has increased. 
Calcium 2 plus has polarized the chloride to a great extent. Covalent character has increased. Additional energy as a result increases. You can write. As calcium is small ion with greater charge. Smaller compared to potassium, right? Small line with greater charge. Favors. Sorry, okay, greater charge, smaller side, greater charge. Results in. Greater polarizing power. This causes the covalent character to This causes the covalent character to increase. As a result, Lattice energy increases. Thus becomes more exothermic. Thus becomes more exothermic. OK. I hope that's clear. Because that is explanation is based on this point. We'll start from the oxothermic point and then go back. Okay. I hope that's clear for everyone. Any questions there? Uh, the table shows the theoretical lattice energies of some chlorides of group two. Explain the trend in theoretical lattice energies of uh, energies on descending group two. What happens? On descending, that means magnesium, calcium, it decreases. Less negative decreases. Why decreases? Because the radius of the ion cation increases. When the radii increase, some of the ionic radii increase, but this energy becomes less, less exothermic. And when the distance increases, what happens? Attraction becomes less, right? When the cation and the anion is closer, attraction is weak, uh, strong, strong lattice. When they are strong, far away, weak lattice, right? So right. That is energy is decrease, descending the group. You can say less exothermic or decreases. Descending the group, and this energy becomes less exothermic or decreases. This is due to this is due to the increase. This is due to the increase. The size of the cation. As the cation size increases,
the attraction decrease. The attraction decreases. Hence, that is energy becomes less exothermic. That is energy becomes less exothermic. One more question. Calculate that enthalpy change of solution of calcium chloride. Hydration is given. That is energy is given. If you remember the equation, enthalpy of solution minus that is energy plus enthalpy of hydration of the cation, enthalpy of hydration of the anion. Just simply substitute. Total five, eight, calcium. And remember chlorine, CaCl2, anion should be multiplied by two, okay. So calcium chloride, don't forget that. Calcium two plus and two Cl minus, so anion should be multiplied by two. Cation is 1,650 minus anion, 364 times 2. What's the final answer? Yeah. Final answer, please. X, Y, and Minus 120, that's correct. Okay. Right, so that's the end of that question. We'll take a short brain break uh, and continue and complete the paper after the break. Uh, I hope everyone is back. Uh, this question. Uh, Concerns six isomers, each with the molecule of formula C5, H10O2, uh, A, B, C, D are structural isomers, all react with aqueous sodium carbonate to produce carbon dioxide, which means uh, it's a carboxylic. Carboxylic. That's the test for carboxylic. Isomer A is a straight chain. B has two peaks in its whole high resolution and MR spectrum. Both are singlets. C, chiral center. But isomer D does not. Okay. Straight chain carboxylic acid. Draw displayed formula or structure. So you can draw displayed or molecular, doesn't matter. Structural. So five carbons one, two, three, four. C5, right? Yeah. And the second one, NMR two peaks. That means the hydrogens has to be in the same environment. One singlet because adjacent carbon has no hydrogen. And then you have a, this group. This OH is also anyway singlet, right? Uh, C with a chiral carbon. Chiral carbon, let's see. No, it can't be here. CH3 is here. Yes. This is a chiral carbon. And the last one is not optically active. Then you can shift the CH3 here to a second carbon. is not optically active because there are two CH3 groups attached. Two CH3 groups attached. Got it? Isomer E contains uh, 
ether functional group ORO ROR and a ketone functional group. This is ether, this is ketone. Low resolution photon and MR spectrum of E has four peaks. Uh, the dispatch formula of isomer E is what? It's not dispatch formula, structural formula. It is there or there? Right, structural formula, right? The four hydrogen environments responsible for the four peaks uh, are labeled. Complete the table. Complete the table of information regarding these peaks, including the splitting. B. A is three. B is two. Number of hydrogens. C is two. Number of hydrogens is the area. Chemical shift values. Chemical shift values. You have to use a data booklet for that. What's the chemical shift value? Okay, you can get me the chemical shift values. I will work, work on the splitting patterns. B we split into a triplet. Why I Also a triplet. Adjacent to hydrogen. D a singlet. There's no hydrogen in the adjacent carbon. There's no adjacent carbon. And you get these values. Chemical shift values. Two five seven. 4.2, 1 1.5, 2.9. Same. Got it? the number of peaks in C13 and MR spectrum. Just count the number of carbons in different environments. This is unique. One, two, three, four, five. Each carbon is unique. Different environment. So you get five peaks. Five peaks. Isom F is a neutral compound that smells of pairs. That means it has to be an ester. And be ester. It can, because esters have sweet fruity smells. It can be formed by the reaction between V and W in the presence of sulfuric. That confirms this esterification reaction because only esterification reaction we use uh, is sulfuric acid. Uh, compound V has absorption in, in, in MR spectrum, in, oh, sorry, IR spectrum, infrared spectrum, 1720 is the carbon ion. That's the carbon ion, right? And then you have 3050, that is the OH attached to uh, carboxylic. Not the free OH. OH attached to carboxylic is between 2500 3100 at that range, if I can remember, yeah, attached to my memory. Uh, what, 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 free OH is uh, much higher, about 3200. Compound W can be formed directly from propanol. Okay. Let's see. Identify by name or formula compounds V, W, and F. V is what? V is a carboxylic acid. V is a carboxylic acid. W is, has to be alcohol. It has to be alcohol. V is a carboxylic acid. 
W alcohol can be formed from propanol. That means propanol reduction of propanol gives you propanol. Propanol is W. Right? Actually, you have to say propane one. No, propanol is wrong. Propanol is wrong because there's propane two all also. So ethanol you can say because there's no ethane one, ethane two all. Propanol, if you just say propanol, you lose a mark. And uh, V has to be a carboxylic acid. How many carbons? This has uh, five carbons in total, right? It says isomer of uh, E, no? F is isomer of E, right? Just, uh, isomer, F is neutral, isomer. Five carbons, so propane means this has to be uh, ethanol, ethanoic acid. And uh, W and V is found, what is F? Tester. Propyl ethanoid. That's the ester. Got it? Any questions there? You can draw, write the name or draw the structure, doesn't matter. So you have to explain now. The explanation you should write. <clears throat> or explain, like here, it has to be ester because sweet smelling. And uh, W is the alcohol, which is directly formed by from propanol, and V is a carboxylic acid because it has a IR spectrum absorption at 1,720 and 3,050. 1,720 is due to the carbonyl group, 3,050 due to the OH attached with the carboxylic. Got it. So to explain how you arrived at this answer. Set the conditions required for the reagent needed to form compound W from propanol. You can reduce, uh, you can use sodium borohydrate, uh, sodium boro, lithium, aluminium hydride, and dry ether. State the role of sulfuric acid as a catalyst. In the esterification reaction, sulfuric is acting as a catalyst. State uh, which one of the isomers A, E, and F has the highest boiling temperatures. Justify your answer. Which one has the higher, highest boiling temperature? There's A, E, and F. Let's have a look at it. F is ester. What is A? What is A? If we know. Isomer, isomers we do. Oh, I think that's the beginning, but we go back to the beginning. I say, right, okay. Yes, which what this is from the beginning of the question. So which one has the highest? This is a carboxylic acid A. They are asking us to compare A with what? A is a carboxylic, so it has uh, which can form hydrogen bonds, E and F. What is E? This is E. F is ester. So carboxylic acid, the answer is there because it can form hydrogen bonds. So answer is isomer A. As molecules are held together by strong hydrogen bonds. Very 
get together by strong hydrogen bonds. Whereas E and F held together by Van der Waal forces. In which the hydrogen bonds are stronger than Van der Waals. Hydrogen bonds are stronger than Van der Waals. In this case, not always, not always, in this case. Remember, it's uh, wrong to say hydrogen bond as a, not as strong as intermolecular force. Of course, there are some situations like uh, when the world becomes stronger. For example, if you have a alcohol with, say, uh, 20 carbon atoms and alcohol with uh, one carbon, alcohol with one or five carbons, the hydrogen bond is the strongest. But if 20 carbon alcohol, the dispersion London force will be stronger because there's so many electrons, so many carbon atoms, right? Yeah. I think that's the end of that question. Uh, solution of hydrochloric acid PHQ1, which class concentration can be found. That is inverse log pH that can be done. Right. Calculate the volume of water that must be added to 25 cm cube of this solution to increase the pH from 1.2 to 1.5, giving an answer to appropriate significant figures. Now, what was the answer for the previous one? Inverse log minus. Uh, what is uh, inverse log minus 1.125? You can use the P, uh, POH uh, plus pH equals 14, or you can use the P, uh, the KW expression as well. Hydrogen ion, if you find, you can find the hydroxide ion. So you can do this, right? So pH equals 1.125. So H plus equals inverse log pH. Inverse log minus pH. Yeah. Inverse log means or 10 to the power minus 1.125. What's the answer? Point zero seven four. Uh, so that is the pH you can find now. Oh, sorry, pH. This is H plus concentration. So pOH, likewise, 14 minus 1.125. 12.875. You can find the OH concentration as well. Inverse log minus pH, pOH. Don't forget the minus sign. So 10 to the power minus 12.875. One to the power minus 13 mole per decimeter cube. Got it? So that is the H plus and the uh, OH minus concentrations. Uh, calculate the volume of water that must be added to 25 cm cube of this solution. Now this solution, uh, 25 cm cube. Concentration of the acid. H plus concentration is given as we found as 0 0.074 OH minus 1.33 and power minus 3, 13.
Okay, now pH increase from 1.125 to 1.5. 1.5. Let's find H plus concentration. H plus concentration, new H plus concentration. Shift log minus 1.5. Point 0. 0.016. That's a new concentration. Okay, now I think I don't, we don't need to, yeah, just find 0, 3, 1, 6 is a new concentration. Now let's find the uh, moles of the H plus in the original solution. We got the concentration, we have to find the moles of both, right? So let's find the moles of H plus. 1000 contains 0 0.074, 25 contains how much? Can you find that? I hope you have done this question. So give me the answer, please. Let's find the H plus concentration. This is 1.85 to the power minus 3. New H plus, I mean, H plus moles is H plus moles. That's the moles of the H plus, right? We found the new H plus concentration. This is a new. H plus concentration. Right, so this we have the moles of H plus, concentration of H plus. You can find the volume, right? In equal C, we got the moles 1.85, 10 to the power minus 3. We got the concentration. We can find the volume, how much volume we need. Got it? What's the answer? This divided by 0 0.0316.0585 0 dm cube. Which is cm cube multiplied by 1000. 50. We need to have uh, 50, 8.54 cm cube. So how much the volume, volume we should add, how much? 58.54 minus 25. Need to add 33.54 cm cube. Got it? Is the calculation clear? So what I did was I found H, we found H plus and OH minus concentration that is in uh, 25. And we found the new H plus concentration. I mean, new H plus concentration. So I found the moles of H plus. So this is the moles. In the new concentration, the moles will not change, no, the volume only will change. So I apply in equal CV, moles are same. Mm -hmm. Concentration is 0 0.0316 to find, get this mole, to convert this mole to that concentration. That means low concentration. How much volume I need to add? I have to make sure total volume is 58.54. Therefore, volume you need to add, which already 25 is there, 33.54. Is it clear to everyone? Any questions?
<laughs> yeah, I'll explain again. Uh, is the first part clear? Uh, this is the concentration we found, right? H plus and OH minus concentrations we found is clear, right? That is present in 25. Now this, uh, this total mixture is 25. And now the question is, uh, to make the uh, pH 1.5, how much water we need to add? Earlier pH was 1.125, now to increase the pH, that means to dilute it. How much water to add? So new pH uh, is 1.5. And we need to find H plus, new H plus concentration. So the H plus concentration has to be, uh, I mean, H plus concentration is 0.0136 in the new pH. New pH, we got the H plus concentration. Now what we need to do is we have to find number of moles of H plus now. Because if the concentration H plus is known, moles of H plus is known, you can find the volume in equal CV. How to find the moles of H plus? Concentration of H plus is known, volume is known, right? 0 0.074 is present in 25. Right? So 1000 contains 0 0.024, 25 contains how much of moles? You got the number of moles of H plus. This is the number of moles of H plus. By adding water, number of moles doesn't change, only concentration change. So new concentration has to be 0 0.0316. Our H plus concentration is this. So, I mean, the moles is this. You know the moles. N is known. We know the new concentration. See, we need to find the volume to bring that most of this concentration. So volume should be 58.54. That means already we have 25. We need to add 23.54. Uh, clear or not? I'll explain. Shall I, if you not clear, let me know. I'll explain again. Okay, great. All of you copied this? Those who haven't done it before? question uh, phosphoric 5 acid is a weak acid which dissolves in water giving a equilibrium HCPO4 minus ion form in phosphoric 5 acid is added to water can dissociate further into HPO4 2 minus equation 1 identify the acid base in the phases below equation 2 linking the acid base conjugate pairs now, as it pays conjugate pairs, we have to show which one is conjugate, right? So this is H3, H2PO4 has given the H plus. So this is acting as acid one. And this is the base one. Meaning this is one conjugate pair. I put one for the pair. H2 has taken H, H plus, so it's a base base 2 and this is after taking H plus that will act as acid. This is acid 2. So one is one conjugate pair, second one is a second conjugate pair. When acid takes H plus or when acid gives H plus, left behind part is a base. It forms a new base. When the base takes H plus, what is formed is the acid. Acid base conjugate pair always differ by a single proton. Explain why very little dissociation of H2PO4 minus occurs in the solution of phosphoric acid. We can use the Bonston, uh, we can use the uh, leach atlias principle, right? Now see, in the product, acid is produced, right? So this acid produced will uh, push this equilibrium towards backwards as the leach atlias principle. Right? The hydrazonium ion. Hydrazonium ion will 
push the equilibrium towards the left. The hydrozonium ion produced will push the equilibrium towards the left. Using equation 1, write the expression for the acid dissociation constant Ka1 for phosphoric 5 acid. Equation 1, I'm going to write it here, uh, H2PO4, you have to include H3O+, plus, but you don't include water. Why we don't include water? We don't include this water. Why? Two reasons. One is different physical state. Second, water is a solvent, not a reactant. Water is a solvent, not a reactor, so water is not included there. Yep. The next question, uh, 0.5 mole per decimeter cube solution of phosphoric 5 acid has a pH of 1.2, calculate the Ka. Uh, assume that there is no further dissociation of H2PO4 minus. Um, substitute the values. pH is 1.2, you to find the H plus concentration then. So H plus concentration. Uh, what's the value for this? Uh, 6.3 and power minus 2. 6.31 and power minus 2. That's H plus concentration. So Ka1, substitute the values. H plus squared over acid concentration. All right, substitute. 6.31 10 to the power minus 2, uh, point 0.5, this is squared. You can find the K. Uh, point 0.5 is acid. Hold on. This is acid concentration, initial concentration of the acid, right? Uh, hold on, this is 0.5. Can we use this 0.5? Let me check. Is this significant dissociation or what? 0 0.06 out of point. How much is dissociated here? Which process 0 0.06 is gone. Yeah, you can use 0 0.5. What's the answer if you use 0 0.5? Because you use assumption here, right? We can use assumption only to subtract because we have a small difference. We can use the assumption that means initial concentration of the acid as the, is the equilibrium concentration. We can use that assumption here because uh, it's actually a slight difference will be there because all of 0 0.5, 0 0.06 is dissociated, right? So you can take the difference or you can just use 0 0.05 using the assumption. That's also fine. What's the value, please?
seven point nine six uh, ten to the power minus three. At small per decimeter cube, units are important. And remember, you can also subtract the uh, uh, acid amount which is dissociated. Then you get a quite different value because the reason is uh, amount which is dissociated is six point a point zero zero six. Can you see? A point zero zero six. Oh, sorry, point zero six one zero. Uh, it's actually uh, when you compare with point uh, five, it is a quite significant amount. So you can even subtract this and find the answer, or even uh, you can use the assumption and do it all for the both ways. You get the get the marks. But actually, the correct method for this would be this subtracting because it's a significant amount which is dissociated here, right? Uh, 0 0.06 out of 0 0.5 is uh, quite significant. So even if you don't do that, still the answer is correct. I think uh, they are given marks for both ways. Units uh, carry a mark, units are important. Uh, phosphate buffer solutions containing hydrogen phosphate ions and dihydrogen phosphate ions are commonly used in biological research. Explain using a relevant ionic equation how a solution containing these ions can act as a buffer when a small amount of alcohol is added. So first you write the two half equations, right? So you have uh, HPO4 2 minus and H2PO4 minus. So uh, when you add acid, it combines with H plus ions. So this dissociates. This will dissociate this way. That is not correct. How the dissociation? You can not. You can say that it dissociates to give H plus signs and HPO four two minus signs, right? And then uh, this H this will dissociate how complete dissociation that dissociates completely, right? To form phosphate ions. But anyway, the OH minus will combine with the H plus to form water. That's the main equation. So the first point here should be the mixture will contain a larger concentration of both phosphate ions and hydrogen phosphate. Can you see? It have phosphate ions and hydrogen phosphate. Phosphate and hydrogen phosphate. The mixture contains a large concentration or large reservoir of phosphate and hydrogen phosphate ions. Then you can say when H plus is added, sorry, when OH minus is added, this is alkali. It combines with H plus to form water. H plus to form water. As a result, the concentration of the uh, acid, to, acid to salt ratio, concentration ratio, you can say salt to acid or acid to salt concentration ratio, remains almost constant. That's the third point. That point should be written always in the buffer uh, explanation. You should write the third point always. Acid to salt or salt to acid concentration ratio remains all, almost constant. You should never use the term constant. Say almost constant or virtually constant.
So that's done. Section B is completed. Then we have uh, section C. I think that's uh, question section C is called, usually it's easy. Uh, straightforward calculation. I think this is uh, for entropy, right? Yeah. Uh, ammonia is manufactured in the Haber process. In this process, uh, pressure between 100 atm and 300 atm and temperature between 675 kelvin and 725 kelvin are usually used. Calculate the entropy of the system. Uh, system entropy, you know how to calculate. Entropy of the system, total the number of moles of entropy of the products minus total the number of moles of entropy of the reactants. You have to uh, make sure that you multiply the ammonia by two, nitrogen and hydrogen by three. Products ammonia by two, reactants uh, hydrogen by three. So you can do that part. I'm not going to do it. Explain using ideas about disorder, whether the sign of your A1 is as a, what is the answer you get here for the system? Plus or minus? You get minus 198.8. That means entropy has decreased. Yes, that's correct because you have uh, four gaseous molecules starting to be two gaseous molecules. So entropy should decrease. Decrease. So on says yes. As the number of gaseous molecules decrease, the entropy decreases. As the number of gaseous molecules decrease, entropy decreases. Surrounding entropy can be found. Minus delta H over T. But don't forget to multiply delta H by 1000. That is found, that can be done. And add the two values to get the total entropy. I'm not going to do all this. Oh, sorry, this total entropy is given. Can you you can find the system entropy at uh, 700 Kelvin? At this surrounding entropy you already found. So use the equation total equals system plus surrounding total is given, uh, and the uh, uh, surrounding is we just found, and you can find the system right at that particular temperature. Got it? So that can be done, right? Well, the next question has six marks. So as you can see, there are two uh, pages given to get the six marks. So we have to uh, first plan it. Give one advantage and one disadvantage of using temperature using a temperature higher than 700 Kelvin in the Haber process. Consider the effects in, of increased temperature on the rate of reaction, on the value of surrounding entropy, and the total entropy and the equilibrium concept of formation, all these points, right? Okay, so let's uh, talk about the increase in the rate. So one advantage and one disadvantage, right? So when you increase the temperature, right, what happens, there'll be more molecules with the energy higher than the activation energy. So that will, first I'll give you the, uh, explain the answer, then I'll give you how the, the, the answer. Tell, uh, detect, detect the answer. Just listen to the explanation first. So when the temperature is increased, there'll be more molecules with the energy higher than the activation. That will result in increased frequency of collisions that will give rise to higher reaction rate. So that's the advantage. Now the advantage is uh, the total entropy. Uh, minus minus becomes or right, plus uh, minus becomes minus right so overall entropy total entropy equals delta is system minus delta h over t because plus and minus is minus so if i increase the temperature what happens this whole 
negative value will decrease. If I increase the temperature, is that right? So attach is exothermic, this exothermic reaction. Oh, this is positive, I'm sorry. This is, uh, this is positive. What is surrounding? Let me write in detail. System plus entropy of the surrounding, right? What is delta H surrounding? Minus delta H over T, right? So this exothermic reaction minus minus becomes plus. So it
You are currently the only person in this conference. You are currently the only person in this conference.